Welcome back, everyone. I'm Travis with Linux Academy. In this lesson, we're going to talk about Watchtower. Now, Watchtower is an application that will go and monitor your running Docker containers to see if there's any changes to its image. And if there is a change, it will go and restart the container using the new image. Now, Watchtower is a pretty handy tool to keep your containers up to date, but whether you choose to use it or not really kind of depends on your CI CD processes along with your company's change control policies. To get this process going, we're going to start by setting up a containerized application that Watchtower is going to go and monitor. We're going to start off by going and cloning this repository, and we're going to call it Watchtower. Go and cd into the Watchtower directory. Next, execute a Docker checkout, and the name of the branch is called Docker file. Okay, in the Watchtower directory, we have our application along with our Docker file. We go and take a look at that. You can see that we're going and copying everything into var node which proposes a problem because we do have a Docker file in there, but that's fine. We will deal with that after we go and get Watchtower set up. Before we go and build our image, we're going to log into Docker Hub, execute a Docker login dash U, and then supply your Docker Hub username, and then enter your password. Now you may get this warning saying that your password will be stored unencrypted in home cloud user docker slash config .json. This is the case. It's not a big deal for what we're doing here. You may want to look into more secure credentials when it comes to Docker Hub for your production environment though. Next we're going to go and execute a Docker image build. Tag it with your Docker Hub username slash my dash express and then end the command with a period. Now that the image is done building, we're going to go and push it to Docker Hub. Execute a Docker image push. Supply your username slash my dash express. And the reason why we're pushing the image to Docker Hub is that when Watchtower goes to check, it's actually going out to the Docker registry to check and see if there's any differences there. Now we're going to go and deploy out a container using the image. Execute a Docker container run. Make sure that it runs in the background, so use the D flag. We're going to name this container watch dash app. We're then going to map port 80 to port 3000 on the container. We're also going to set the restart policy to be always, and then supply the image we just created. Go and list your containers to make sure that my express is running. For me, it is. Now we're going to go and deploy out the watchtower container. Execute docker container run. We're going to have it run in the background, so use the D flag. Name the container watchtower. We also want to set the restart policy to be always. And we're going to go and map var run docker .sock over to var run docker .sock on the container. The image is going to be v2 tech watchtower because watchtower uses an entry point. We're going to be supplying an additional argument, which is dash i, which stands for interval, and then 15, which is going to be 15 seconds. So watchtower is going to go and check for changes every 15 seconds, and then it will go and restart any containers that have changes with the new image. Go and list your containers and Watchtower is up and running. Okay, so previously I pointed out that we have a Docker file and it's getting copied over to our image. We wanna make sure that and several other things get excluded. We're gonna go and start off by creating a Docker ignore file. And we're gonna go and add the following contents. We wanna make sure that we go and exclude the Docker file as well as the git directory and the git ignore file. We don't need these files being copied over to the image. I'm also gonna add a comment to the app.js file. You can go put whatever you want. I'm just adding in this as a comment. And to really make sure that things are different, I'm going to go and create a new file called newfile.js by going and touching it. Now we're going to go and rebuild the image, but this time we're going to be using the no cache flag because we don't want to use any of the previous layers. Now I'm going to re push the image back up to Docker Hub. Okay, we do have some changes that are being pushed, which means that Watchtower will go and pick up the changes. Now I'm going to wait about 15 to 30 seconds just so Watchtower has time to go and pick up the changes. Now I'm going to execute a Docker container LS. And it looks like the watched app was refreshed about 41 seconds ago. Now we're going to go and attach the container by executing a Docker container exec. Use the INT flag, specify the watched app, and then bin bash. We are taking directly to var node, and if I do an ls-la, we should see that the Docker file is gone along with the git directory and newfile.js is also present. So there you go, you've seen Watchtower in action. Like I said, it is a pretty handy little tool to go and keep your containers up to date. Now, whether you decide to use this or not really kind of depends on your CI CD process as well as your change control policies. That's all I have for this lesson. Go ahead and mark it complete.